Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We now move on to the second part of uh, our course, the second uh, lecture, which is about understanding the communicative environment again. And this is the part two of that particular talk that I was giving a little earlier. Now, before we proceed with that, uh, this is an overview of what we are going to do together. But uh, I would like to bring back to your memory the things that we did in the last session we talked about uh, the fundamental aspects of communication so like uh, overt implicit and explicit communication we talked about how the communication process takes place the various barriers and filters the communication model and uh, you must have wondered as to why is it that uh, these elements are relevant if we are going to talk about soft skills now it's with that that i would like to begin this and uh, it is with within that that I would like to focus on uh, the elements of culture and context as we proceed with this talk. And of course, uh, we will talk about the ways that uh, we generally communicate. And if you look at uh, this slide, you will notice that right at the beginning we have talked about three or four different categories like verbal, nonverbal, music, visuals, and then towards the end we are talking about new technology and uh, it is very important to realize that uh, with the advent of new technology the way we communicate has changed because you see that uh, communication is a symbolic act communication is a symbolic process where something stands for something else why do you smile to begin with let us say you smile because you want to in some way communicate to the other person that you are not unhappy with that person or everything is fine with you or that you get along nicely. So, it is a kind of a symbolic act. The smile in itself does not necessarily convey that you are happy. You may or you may not be happy, but it is a social act, a social symbolic act indicative of the fact that uh, you want to convey certain things. So, if you are looking at each and every act, each and every sign that performs a specific symbolic act and these acts are very, very important if we have to be social human beings, meaningfully to contribute to the society, to meaningfully navigate within a society. So, when we keep these things in mind, uh, we realize that uh, communication in the context of soft skills is very, very important. But then you would ask me that uh, why not go to the application of communication, why not go directly to listening and speaking skills, because it is very important to self reflect. And before we self reflect about how we communicate, it is important to have certain concepts with which to communicate. And it is for this reason specifically that we are looking at the concepts. Secondly, these concepts will come up again and again as we proceed with the entire course in other uh, context as well in for instance when we are talking about stress when we are talking about let us say attitude when we are talking about persuasion we will suddenly realize that uh, the concepts that we have introduced here some of them will become relevant there and it is for this reason again that we are looking at the concepts so having set uh, this background now let us look at what we are going to do today i have already outlined what we are going to do today but before even you begin this course, here is something with which you can start. How good a communicator are you? Now, the point is that uh, the links have been already provided. If you go to the powerpoints there, you can cut paste the link and you can use the links over there. The first survey can be downloaded. It is a PDF document and from the University of Louisville and you can do it on your own. The second one is an automated tool uh, located in mind tools and uh, you can do it online and you will get a score on it. 
Now, it is not very important to identify how how rigorously these uh, surveys have been created, how, how good or how bad these surveys are. It is also not very very relevant to find out, uh, I mean, how badly uh, you have performed there. It's it's not not that uh, that is the only survey which is available and it is giving you the final judgment about you are being a very good performer or you are being a very bad, bad performer. But the important thing here is to be honest with yourself. If you do this survey, you will be able to identify where you stand in terms of communication at a generic level. The reason for giving you two surveys is so that you can compare the scores and get an average idea of where you stand as a communicator. Mind you, these surveys are not about how effectively you communicate in English, which is important today in our context. But in general, using the various channels that we talked about right at the beginning, how good a communicator you happen to be. So, having said that, and I hope that uh, you will do that, uh, you will be completing the survey, and we will have in the discussion forum a link, maybe a Google document or a template where you can either put in your name or as an anonymous entity, you can put your scores. Now, that will give us an idea as to where the skill level of the class is right at the beginning of the session. It would be relevant because at the end of the course, probably we will take this survey again and we will find out in general how significantly the class has improved. So, I would like you to, to take this survey seriously. And having said that, let us move on to the points that we made in the outline, in the overview, which is about the different uh, aspects that we will be taking up in this course. Now, you might uh, find that uh, speaking and listening are highlighted, reading and writing are not, because uh, in some sense, our focus is on social transactions. It is true that uh, you use uh, texting, you use uh, writing of some kind of the other for quick transactions in the modern context. So, when we talk about new technologies, we will talk about them briefly and uh, reading is something which we cannot highlight over here, because that is not the main focus. But uh, when it comes to speaking and listening, these will be very, very significant as we proceed in the next uh, few uh, lectures, as well as when we talk about uh, persuasion, when we talk about transaction, we talk about conflict, because it is uh, basically through interpersonal communication that uh, these things occur mostly, not that it cannot happen through writing, but uh, generally they do happen through speaking and listening primarily, through body language, through your voice and tone. And so, we are going to in the context of soft skills primarily focus on these areas. And as I said with you, when we talk about new technologies, we will move on to certain aspects of text, text etiquettes and uh, what texts do manage to communicate or not manage to communicate. And in fact, uh, it would be fun if and as I have shared with you in the introductory talk, uh, if we can actually conduct certain experiments with your help to find out how we text, how we communicate and identify the results. That will be very exciting and we will be doing it uh, later in, in the later weeks as we proceed with the course. However, when we talk about the first two, uh, we will be we will be talking about uh, uh, we will be talking about uh, verbal which is speaking and listening let me clearly clarify what exactly uh, are the points that we are going to touch upon now although speaking has been highlighted right at the beginning it's probably more important to listen to things before we speak listening has a number of dimensions and we'll start off with listening in the next talk that we have and very often effective listening will give rise to effective speaking, uh, on which we shall be devoting at least two lectures, uh, which will deal with speaking and then later on with conversation. Now, there when we talk about speaking, voice will play a significant role. And when we talk about voice, voice manages to carry emotions and those have very interesting implications for how we assess people and how we assess whether they are being honest, dishonest, sincere or insincere. So, those are things, those are issues we will discuss as we proceed with them. Reading and writing as I told you, uh, writing we will take up briefly, not reading. When it comes to non-verbal, 
here are a few things uh, that uh, I would like to highlight. We would be focusing on facial expressions. Now, facial expressions play a very, very significant role in our social lives. You might, uh, when you are discussing things, realize that some people have faces which look in general happy. Some people have faces which in general look unhappy. We have certain masks. Now, it is possible that uh, the people who look unhappy may actually be unhappy. It is also possible that that is the way their faces convey in general when they are neutral to the world outside. So, but the very fact that uh, faces play such a very important role, the, the, the moment somebody walks into a lecture, the moment somebody walks into a house, the moment a stranger appears in front of you, you are looking at the face. The face looks imposing, the face looks weak, the face looks sincere, the face looks encouraging, friendly, all kinds of information come from the face. And a lot of research has gone into the various aspects of the face, the different muscles that play significant roles in the face. And this is one area which we are going to focus on later in a very, very detailed way. Because for social transactions, this is a very, very important aspect of things. And uh, whether it is conflicts, whether it is negotiations, uh, whether it is persuasion and leadership, now the facial expressions will be of paramount importance and hence they will constitute an important part of what we focus on as we proceed. Postures and gestures again uh, relate to nonverbal communication and if you remember in the earlier talk we talked about covert communication or unintentional communication. Even if you do not intend to you manage to communicate a lot of things through your face and through your body. Now, the body has two dimensions. The body happens to communicate actively when you are using gestures. So, you are talking to somebody, your hands are moving, okay, these are known as illustrators. You are making specific gestures like if I take my hand up and put it on my lips, indicative of silence, this is known as an emblem. Now, these are gestures which are very often intentional. The first one is an unintentional gesture and the second one is an intentional gesture. Some of the gestures we have control over, we do it intentionally, we do them intentionally. Some of the other gestures we are not even aware of. Very often you find that people who are not used to public speaking suddenly brought in front of an audience would put their hands behind their backs or put them inside the pockets because they are not comfortable and they do not know what to do with their body. They are conscious of the body and because they are conscious of the body, the illustrative gestures that the body makes are no longer being met. On the other hand, you want to make specific gestures, you have full control over the gestures that you are about to make. Whether intentional or unintentional, these gestures again play a significant role in uh, making you interpret it in specific ways they play a significant role in the way somebody interprets you as a person and assesses your behavior. So, gestures will again with postures, the way you hold your body, the way you slouch, the way you lean forward, these things play a very significant role. In fact, uh, you might be aware of the fact that even if you are walking away from somebody, just by looking at the way you walk, somebody would be able to, your close friend would be able to identify you. It is on the basis not only of your body mass, uh, the way your body looks, but also on the basis of the way your gait, your posture, as well as the way you walk, the movements you make, that we are able to identify them. Gestures and postures play again a significant role uh, in the context of transactions, because in social transactions, space, how far you are how you point to somebody, how you make a gesture towards somebody, these play a significant role. These are intertwined with culture and context to make or to mean different things. In different cultures, the same sign can mean different things. For instance, if I make a sign like this, in certain cultures it can mean 0 and in certain other cultures it can mean a gesture of appreciation. So, this is again a very, very important aspect of things. And you see that uh, as we proceed with this uh, series of talks, we will be talking about some very exciting things, lies as such as lies and truths. How do we 
guess when people are telling lies? How do we guess when people are telling the truth? We will be able to identify these things uh, using a number of tools and I am pretty excited about how you respond to that. And uh, these relate to facial expressions as well as to postures and gestures. Because you see that uh, the ability to tell lies depends on your ability to control your senses. So, when you are telling a lie, you are manipulating your speech. When you are telling a lie, you are manipulating your voice, your facial expressions, your postures and gestures. And for most of us, it is very difficult to control all of them together. So, there is always a possibility of something leaking out. These are known as leakages, a body language, through body language, maybe through speech, a slip, a slip of a particular word not maintaining or maintaining eye contact, you can have a number of ways that this happen. But even if we do not take the extreme examples, you would say that why are we interested in extreme examples like telling lies. I would like to point out that in most social situations, we are forced to tell lies. These are known as white lies, we will elaborate them uh, and we will take it up, take them up in a detailed way uh, at a later point of time. But to make a point clear, White lies are innocent lies. Let us say that uh, you have a situation where uh, you are not feeling good, you have visited a friend and you are having a food and you do not feel like eating, but you would be hurting that person if you do not eat properly and every time he asks how is the food, you have to say that it is nice. Now, this is a white lie. So, throughout our social transactions, we keep on telling lies, small lies, big lies and it is very, very important to assess if not lies, degrees of discomfort, degrees of comfort, degrees of openness, degrees of reticence and reluctance in order to be uh, good at soft skills, in order to understand others emotions. And hence, as I told you a little earlier, it is very relevant to focus on the nonverbal aspects of communication that we just now focused on. One of the areas that I have not mentioned on this slide, uh, which in some sense belongs to the area of uh, uh, it is a speech is uh, a paralinguistic dimension, because speech constitutes text. So, when we are verbalizing, we are saying something which can be written down as words. So, that is the text, but we are also saying it in a particular way, we are intoning our voice is being modulated in specific ways, which is the paralinguistic component, which is where very often the emotion most dominantly gets expressed. So, when we talk about conversation, we are also going to talk about that. And uh, when we talk about facial expressions, postures and gestures, to a certain extent, we will also touch upon some of these areas. Now, when we talk about uh, the next thing that uh, is relevant in these areas, culture and context, whether uh, I just, uh, just a few minutes back, I talked to you about a gesture like this, which has different meanings in different contexts. Okay. So, culture and context. Uh, will play a very significant role as we proceed. And uh, I hope that uh, by this point of time, I have been able to share with you the relevance of soft skill com communication in the context of soft skills. Now, we come to another aspect of things, uh, which will again be taking up uh, and hopefully it will be exciting and interesting, because these are areas of very, very topical research currently and we will probably be able to do a little bit of research together as we proceed with this course. There is sound and music, which is the uh, the auditory dimension of our senses, again a channel through which communication takes place. When we are talking about uh, speech, we have already discussed that earlier. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to look at noise and sounds. In the context of uh, our communication, these also play a significant role. However, probably they play a more significant role uh, uh, in the context of, uh, let us say, making a movie or depicting a audio, or, let us say, play or whatever, uh, than in the context of actual communication. Because uh, sounds uh, might contextualize things, but we generally do not use sounds. On the other hand, music plays a very, very significant uh, role in our lives. And this is one area we are going to touch upon music as a very, very significant aspect of communication and social communication. Now, the point is that uh, 
you might be surprised, you might say that well where does music figure, I will say that it figures in let us say multimedia communication. Sound and music in certain senses would figure significantly in multimedia communication. And again uh, that would play a very, very important role in whatever we are covering. Because in the act of socialization, when we use new technology, we have access to multimedia, we have the ability of creating animations, we have the ability of linking sounds, music and other things to these animations. And thus, we have a very, very powerful tool through which we can not only uh, communicate to somebody cognitively that is communicating information, we would also be able to communicate emotions. And mind you, emotions very often regulate and modify or even manipulate our cognitive decision making. So, in the context of soft skills, this would when you link it with modern technology, when you link it up with social media will play a very, very significant role. For instance, if you are looking at Facebook, very often we find that uh, people give their favorite songs on a Facebook. Now, the presentation of your depiction of your favorite song on a Facebook in certain ways get linked to your cultural identity. The kind of person you are is very often linked to the kind of music that you listen to, whether uh, it is done consciously or unconsciously, whether it is biased or whether it actually manages to access somebody's real persona, these are debatable things. The bottom line is that the kind of music that you present on Facebook would in certain ways determine the way people perceive you. So, when I talk about music and the way it communicates, uh, it is not really far away from soft skills, as far away as it would have seemed 10 years back, because today you find that it plays a very significant role in our lives in the context of multimedia. So, when we are talking about music, uh, uh, we are we will be looking at how music communicates the different uh, let us say uh, the different components, the different features of music that play a significant role uh, and uh, the way that they communicate about us, about our personality, about our attitudes and the way that music can be used to evoke emotions convey emotions to manipulate emotions in others. Now, these are some of the things which will be very relevant in the context of soft skills. We will have uh, a detailed discussion about that as we proceed. We will also have certain fun games and interactions and even uh, uh, let us say quizzes or uh, surveys to explore music together and come out with the findings that we are able to identify collaboratively. So, when we are looking at music, we can look at uh, musical meaning and music and emotion and then I will try to link it to specific activities that you can do, specific group activities that we can do together and then as I have obviously made it clear, apply it to the communicative context. So, this is one of the other things we will be doing together. Now, let us come to a very, very important component of uh, uh, contemporary communicative environment which is visuals. Now, visuals became dominant in the later part of the 20th century and in the 21st century visuals pervade us and uh, they surround us and uh, we spend a huge amount of time with visuals. Now, what exactly do I mean by visuals? Visuals cannot be really separated from multimedia, but uh, initially we will talk about visuals in isolation anything that we see around us is visual. Now, that was true in ancient times, that is true today also. But what is true today is that we have the ability to manipulate visuals, because our communicative environment has the ability to create and communicate visuals. So, when I am sitting in this uh, let us say theatre, the various things that are around me, which surround me are things which I may not have control over, but the screen behind me, the power points that I am showing, the very fact that we are switching between the power point and me and if I scribble something, uh, you can look at uh, the paper on which I am scribbling or I can show you a movie, I can play music and show you the fractals being generated by some software, all this is visual. And this has played such a powerful role that today we are more and more 
leaning in the direction of visuals and multimedia. The best illustration is the movement from telephones to mobiles, from mobiles to smart mobiles. And we have mobiles where primarily the interface is a visual interface. The interaction primarily is visual. Even when we have texts, we use smileys, you, we use emoticons and these tell us that we are not satisfied with text anymore. At every point of time, we want to insert visuals into our lives, okay, to mediate using visuals. There is possibly a reason for that because uh, visuals are very, very per persuasive. They have, they make a very strong emotional impact and hence in the communicative environment probably, and now this is a highly debatable issue, visuals have become very, very important. And hence, when we talk about visuals, we will talk about visuals in two different contexts. We will talk about visuals when we are making PowerPoint presentations or presentations of any kind, multimedia presentations. We will in fact, uh, do presentations together. Some of you might even upload presentations, we might even comment on them. That is how we are going to do that. But we will also look at the new visual environment, which is generated by the digital age, the way that it manipulates us the way that we manipulate it and the way that it influences communication, especially persuasive communication, which is the forte today. Communication means today in various contexts, even in the context of soft skills, making a good impression, managing to convince others and all that. And uh, visuals play a very, very powerful role in that. Even if you are looking at scientific literature uh, 100 years back, and if you are looking at the graphics, if you are looking at the graphs, if you are looking at the visual display of statistics, you find that today it is much superior, much more powerful, much more, uh, much more innovatively and creatively designed, even animated. Why is it so? Because it is not just the facts and figures that matter, the way that you present these facts and figures also matter to a significant extent. And this is where the visual dimension of uh, displaying statistics and things like that play a very significant role. Now, visuals, uh, if you are looking at uh, visuals, we find that uh, the first point I made was about the rise of the visuals in the 20th century and its pervasiveness today, because even the holdings today are animated. If you are looking at a cricket stadium, if you are looking at the boundaries, you have visuals there, which are animated. If you are walking into a subway, if you are walking up some place, if you are looking at holdings, big huge holdings, now they have become dynamic, they were visuals earlier, but they are ever changing dynamic visuals. If you are working into a shopping mall, these things have become pretty common. The second point I wanted to make was about visuals as supplements. When we are talking about communication, when we are talking about speech, body language, nonverbal communication, if you are talking about a context like a presentation context, the visual acts as a supplement it is something which is added, which enhances the communication process. If you are talking about scientific literature, if you are showing graphs, the visual again is a supplement. So, today the visual as a supplement is another important aspect that needs to be explored and we will be doing that in a detailed way as we proceed. And again, as I said with you a little earlier, it is relevant in the context of soft skills. Now, the final one is visuals and multimedia because visual happens to be integrated with other aspects. Visuals can be static, visuals can be uh, dynamic, that is uh, they can be animation or they can be very much like what you are seeing right now, me speaking. Okay. And uh, along with that, the visuals also include voice. So, when you are listening to me, you have multimedia because you are able to listen to me and uh, you are able to see me together. Multimedia also means uh, the ability to interact, interactivity. Uh, this is the more recent kind of multimedia that we are looking at. And uh, it will again plays a very significant role. And as I told you a little earlier, we have the ability to create multimedia even using a small smartphone. And hence, that is one aspect and we use that for communicating things. We send off presentations, we make presentations using Skype. and uh, I am making a presentation to you using PowerPoint slides. So, visuals and multimedia in the context of various kinds of communicative 
contexts and how to make an impression using them will become significant and hence we will take it up. So, talking having talked about visuals, uh, now I would like to share with you an example of uh, how visuals can be very, very exciting. Now, if you are looking at this image, uh, this is an image which was generated by the French uh, painter Salvador Dali known as the metamorphosis of Narcissus in 1937. Now, the story of uh, Narcissus uh, in the Greek mythology is of a person who is in love with himself and uh, for whatever reason he makes one of the goddesses, the Greek goddesses angry and uh, the angry goddess curses that uh, he would so much fall in love uh, with himself that he would not be able to tear himself away uh, from himself and hence you find that uh, on one occasion he looks down at the still water, sees his own reflection and is so fascinated by it that he does not manage to look up ever again. Now, it so happens that uh, along to uh, according to uh, that uh, myth, uh, what happens is that uh, because of this curse, he looks down at the still water and over a period of time he is metamorphosed or transformed and becomes a tiny and beautiful flower known as the Narcissus flower. So, if you are looking at this uh, particular very, very powerful uh, visual, you find that this story has been depicted although statically in a way that uh, is uh, that taxes our uh, vision in specific ways. Now, let me help you with uh, understanding the figure. If you look closely, you find that this is the head and this is the knee. So, this is the torso, this is the thigh. So, this is the this is the person, this is the chest and this is the shoulder. So, you find that one arm is going down into the water and here is the reflection. The other leg, this is the back connecting the leg and it is going up the thigh, the knee and it is this part of the knee is going down again into the water. You can see the ankle and the reflection of the ankle. The other leg is folded, you can see the knee over here, it is folded inside and here is the other shoulder humped back. So, you find a person who is put, who has put his uh, head on his knee and is looking down into the water. On the other hand, if you are looking at this image which looks very similar, the position, the shapes are very similar, but if you are to make sense of it, you have to understand it in a different sense. Imagine that hand is emerging out of the water, the hand is emerging here and this is the reflection of the hand. What you can see over here is the first finger, this is the second, the third and fourth fingers folded over here and this is the thumb jetting out of the water. So, the thumb and the finger within them they are holding a, an egg and out of the egg a beautiful narcissus flower is emerging. So, you find that uh, what we have over here is an illustration of visuals and the way that visuals manage to communicate very powerfully in various interesting ways, but it also manages to tell us a lot more about visual that visuals can be misleading, visuals can create illusions, uh, visuals can lead us uh, and depending on the kind of orientation that you have, visuals can tell us different stories. You change the orientation, the meaning of the visual changes. You change the color, the meaning of the visual changes. The context and the various uh, symbolic uh, components which surround it and the meaning of the entire thing changes. This painting that I shared with you right now is an illustration of many of these components which are so very powerfully located in visuals and this is one of the areas that we are going to look at as we proceed with these sessions. So, the next few things that we are going to look at will be culture and context. Any uh, culture is a, has a very wide definition, we might talk about a national culture, we can talk about a local culture, a state culture, uh, where we are talking about our beliefs, our attitudes, our specific behavior patterns, uh, the way we speak even in the same language being spoken in different ways. But when we are talking about a subculture, 
we are talking about even a smaller area than that let us say the culture of IIT Kharagpur can be considered as a subculture. You find that within this particular place people behave in specific ways, uh, people transact in particular ways, people use specific languages, have specific rituals which are not there in other places. If you google for something known as Rangoli or illumination at IIT Kharagpur, you will find that these are two distinctively different festivals highly publicized which are unique to this particular place. Now, this is a part of our subculture that students do these things in a distinctive or a specific way. Now, culture plays a very significant role in the context of soft skills and communication and uh, the reason we are talking about that is because uh, when we are talking about uh, culture of a particular place, we realize that uh, it is, uh, it is something uh, which uh, determines how we understand what are being said. In one place namaskar is, uh, namaskaram is the thing which is used, in another place you find that uh, greeting is hi or hello. So, these changes, these small things make a significant uh, difference and one needs to be very perceptive about the culture within which one is communicating. So, that is why it is relevant, we will take it up at different points of time, although generically. Context is something which I illustrated very briefly by showing these four lines. The gods must be crazy, medieval Europe glass making water. When you look at these four lines, they do not make any sense until you just convert or converge on this bottle. The gods must be crazy is a movie which is, which begins with a uh, the story of a coca cola bottle or a cold drink bottle, medieval Europe glass making okay, and bottle making was very very significant, water is contained inside the bottle. You find that uh, to begin with these four sentences are given meaning within the uh, or they give within the context of the bottle, when bottle the bottle is brought in it creates a context and they interact in various ways with that independently also they manage to interact and give different dimensions to the same bottle as a concept. So, context is again something which is relevant. Now, the thing which I have already shared with you, but which I would quickly take up here is the new media which is very relevant for soft skills and communication. The new media is the digital media, we will not go into the details of it right now. Online newspaper, blogs, wikis, video games, social media and the fundamental feature of these happen to be dialogues, interactions. So, there is a perpetual scope for quickly interacting, even texts not like uh, letters which were written and which took months to be delivered or weeks to be delivered. And the key features are that they can be manipulated, they can be networked, they are dense, they can be compressed and they are very, very interactive. Now, these are key features which we will be exploring, experimenting with, with your help as we focus on those aspects and we proceed with the next few classes. So, learning new concepts uh, social media, social network, multimedia, e-learning and pedagogy, hypermedia, we will be dealing with some of these concepts because now they have become relevant in the context of communication and soft skills. Today we are not going to focus on these, but we will definitely take them up as we explore new media. So, these are the summary of key points that we have met so far. And as I said with you, please take the survey which uh, we had started with and in the next session we will focus on listening because it is the key to the one of the most fundamental things to communication. Thank you.